Да, да. Hello again. It's family life in rural Ukraine, and today, today uh, you can see totally urban landscape. And uh, maybe you remember Velina. She is a um, uh, hero of uh, the first series of the blog, and she lived in our village with two nice girls, her daughters, for one year, and he, she started her, her super sweet business with um, candies uh, without sugar based on fruit uh, puree or... Mm -hmm. Is it pastilla in English? Fruit rolls. Fruit rolls? Uh, fruit rolls. Only if you, yeah, if you love fruit rolls, Belina's pastilla is the best. And if you don't know how to contact her, maybe, uh, not maybe, uh, we'll see. We'll make the deal with Velina if I'll uh, post the link to her page. <laughs> uh, and uh, she, yeah, she, she buys tons of fruit and uh, converts them into super cool stuff and super healthy. And now she lives in Kiev because, you know, how, maybe it, it is very strange, but in the village it's not too easy to get uh, enough uh, fruits and vegetables for fruit rolls, or vegetable rolls, or whatever rolls. And uh, in, in Kyiv uh, there is a big uh, bazaar. <laughs> Market. Market. But people call it bazaar, really. They go to Turkey and, uh, or other eastern things and they know the so word bazaar. So she goes to bazaar and she buys uh, a lot of uh, fruits and sometimes uh, much more that she can over she can uh, use yeah. <laughs> for her candies and uh, for, at least we know that her kids get enough fruits um, not really yeah <laughs> <laughs> maybe not really no guarantees but uh, her good girls look great and they are not today with us and I will not, unfortunately, I will not show you uh, uh, them to you. Uh, but uh, they've met my boys maybe a few months ago. And my boys were super upset. You know why? Because they said they grew up, you know, they just grew up. Not the same girls, not the same. But I don't know. They are, I like them updated. Uh, and I, li I like them any, anyhow. They are still great. And her, their mother is also great. That, and when I come to Kiev, we, we meet when we can. Yeah. And we enjoy this because it's a lot of uh, yeah, stuff to discuss, as you can imagine. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I, uh, we are standing on the bridge, uh, the new bridge in Kiev. Um, and some people call it Klitschko Bridge. I guess you know this famous Ukrainian boxer Klitschko. And no, no, no he's not building bridges now, but he is the mayor of Kiev. For the last four years, I guess, yeah, or whatever. He, he is the mayor of Kiev, and it was his initiative to build uh, this bridge, and people like it a lot. Cause, you cause can show it. Huh? You can show it. I will show you. Yeah, I guess I will edit this bridge into our speech, so you will definitely see it. And another reason why I am showing you the bridge and Velina, because Velina brings a lot of viewers to my blog, and I know it by statistics. And uh, yeah, she is okay with this. I, I asked her permission <laughs> to use the beautiful face, why not? And uh, the bridge uh, brings a lot of tourists to Kyiv. And if uh, you are thinking if uh, it worth it is worth coming to Ukraine or to Kyiv or to the, our village. You know, we have this house, beautiful house for the, for the guests. Uh, you can consider um, coming and uh, see that uh, in Kyiv it is definitely almost as beautiful as in our village. Almost, <laughs> almost, you know. But, you know, I, I'm here and I feel good and it's kind of okay. It must be okay for you, I guess. Mm. So it will be a really short video. I'll keep you updated. But uh, there was a, um, idea, um, an idea from John, one of our first volunteers. And he said that uh, you should uh, do your videos not only uh, in the village, doing uh, something in the garden, but uh, to show people that uh, family life in rural Ukraine is not just sitting in the garden. It's also all these international meetings, forums, trainings, uh, meetings in France and mm -hmm. visiting beautiful places and yes it is the part of uh, rural life 
one of its options and uh, it, it can be great. It's not about escapism or just getting rid of people at all. It's, um, it's all from love and interest to people, but also about respect to your body and to the um, quality of air and all other stuff. What? You're like so me. smart. I'm so smart, you see. I'm so smart and Velina adores me and I adore Velina. And I hope you like us both. Cheers. Hello again. We, we've got new location. Yes. And uh, we are going to speak about friendship with Russia. Do the face. <clears throat> you know, a lot of uh, people in Western, so to say, society thinks sometimes, not all of them, some of them know, but for those that I don't know, and maybe for those who don't know our kind of position, um, this will be the political part. This arch, it's, um, it, it was built in uh, during the Soviet times, and it um, symbolizes uh, the friendship uh, of Ukrainians and uh, Russians. But, you know, at one time it uh, got very obvious that it is not a kind of friendship and um, sometimes people said that it's like, you know, we are the family and uh, Russia yeah, is the older brother and Ukraine is uh, younger brother. What? Oh. I don't know what sex, whatever. Uh, and uh, But this younger brother, it's uh, the provider of uh, natural resources, of food, of bread, of everything that is sweet, nice and good to the older brother, but older brother uh, decides um, the best decision for both brothers. And um, one day, you know, this older brother came to the younger brother and said, you know, I want the part of your cake. And it uh, just did it. And now, you know, there is a war between Russia and Ukraine in eastern part of Ukraine. And um, people, some people that a lot of, uh, especially the people uh, whose friends die in the east, eastern part of Ukraine, they don't like this big, beautiful space in the center of Kyiv, in the hill, on the hills, uh, near the Dnieper River, and super fantastic place with the shit. And uh, the first uh, were LGBT. A community who took over and uh, provided the best idea for this place and um, uh, it was uh, I don't know it was made uh, uh, it was uh, covered with stickers uh, with the um, uh, rainbow. rainbow with the rainbow colors and it was fantastic because um, uh, in Ukraine not many people aware of the existence of this uh, community and uh, for those who didn't know it was just ah rainbows rainbows it is so sweet and for those who know were cool rainbow. ukraine is super you know super update country super liberal super friendly lgbt friendly it was cool and at the time i was happy because i had a lot of friends from the community and uh, obviously i support them and willing to support everybody of course. from the normal ukraine Ukrainians supports, uh, supports LGBT community, but uh, later on uh, more people got to know it's not just a rainbow and it's kind of a symbol, even though not all these rainbow colors were from the, from the colors of the LGBT community, but it still didn't work and they took uh, off the stickers, but they've put the new stickers and you see this crack. And it's good, you know, it's good. Now I think it's good that it is here and it's not obvious uh, that we have this crack and it's at least a symbol. Yeah, it's a big problem. Yeah, it's a big problem. This relationship and uh, uh, unequal and uh, now it's violent and it should be solved. Uh, and I guess, don't think it should be solved on the level between, you know, siblings. <laughs> Uh, brothers and sisters. It mm -hmm. should be solved with, with the involvement of the whole family or even village, you know. <laughs> That's why I send in Heims for uh, all this European uh, um, disturbance with the situation. And um, But uh, the politic, uh, politics of non uh, uh, non interfering and 
no no help i would say just no help to us you know there is some help but now it's less and it's not not doesn't work too much whatever i guess if you don't want the third world war we think to think about this crack and the reasons and the roots of this crack and uh, yeah I don't know if politic work, politics, and the politics and political questions work for the uh, development of the video blogs about uh, family life, but I will give it a try because I want to make it uh, something clear. And I very often I get the questions if I speak Russian, and uh, some people try to speak Russian to me. Yes, I can speak Russian. Obviously, I grew up in Kiev, and it is bilingual city. And um, most of my classmates, they spoke Ukrainian in the families. Uh, and when they turned like 10 or 11 years old, they all converted to Russian because it's more Maybe cool. Too. Yeah. More cool, just more cool. And I was like, what, 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 what? Because I know their families. I, um, I know them from, from like seven years old. And you all spoke Ukrainian like, brilliantly and they didn't speak Ukrainian to me anymore. And it wasn't, um, it wasn't okay for me, but I'm from the family of people who really cared about Ukrainian identity, independence and language. And my father, he learned uh, Ukrainian when he was 18, uh, even though his, um, his uh, mother was Russian and his father was injured during the Second World War and also spoke Russian. But he had an idea at that time, my father is 74, uh, that uh, Ukraine has its identity and language is the key to this identity. And it's important part of this identity. And I, I speak Russian, uh, I can speak Russian, but I speak Russian only with people abroad who don't speak English, and but uh, they speak Russian. For example, old people from yeah. Poland or Lithuania. Not all, no. Old, no. old, old, In older people. Not I all. Can't, I can't agree, agree with you. There are a lot it, of people. It, they were they yeah. were a part of Soviet. Uh, they were Soviet, yeah, at that time, and they studied Russian at school. And sometimes they know Polish and Russian. But in, in Lithuania, they hate uh, Russian language. Yes, but really. sometimes you, if you, I was there in Lithuania, and uh, when I they didn't speak uh, English, English, and I don't speak Lithuanian, I tried Russian, and yeah. it was the third try yes but i tried russian and sometimes with the older people it worked it's, it's only the like the only case when i speak uh, russian when it's the only language i can speak to person uh, in georgia is the same situation and in georgia is the same yes and it's kind of international international language and uh, i use it for speaking with people um, to connect if we don't have any other um, means of contact connection and uh, yes a lot of people in ukraine speak russian but uh, no it's not okay to think that all ukrainians speak russian and all ukrainians should speak russian if you know russian it's really not, not okay uh, and uh, for some people it's even painful i would say yeah so it was rural family life in rural ukraine and uh, it was me, Oksana, and Velina, and she's ma she is making cool candy rolls, uh, yeah. uh, fruit rolls, fruit rolls, yes. And I love a lot because she mixes, you know, different flavors. For example, she makes uh, um, fruit rolls from plums, but she adds, uh, uh, oh, I don't know English words. I, uh, she adds walnuts and uh, honey, honey. Uh, and, uh and chibrets. Maybe I, I will put it in the comments uh, how it, I will see in Google. I am not, I'm not too strong with all these um, plants and animals in uh, and seasoning in English. Uh, uh, cacao. Uh, and co cocoa. 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 And it's her best seller, I would say. But I love uh, sour taste. Mm -hmm. And what do you have sour for me? She doesn't remember. Cool. <laughs> you know, it happens. But if you write to her, 
she will really think clearly because she's kind of shy and uh, it's cool that he's shy she looks beautiful when he, she's shy and um, yes she will give you the normal answer and yeah. give you the options because she I has call. the options she will do her best you know you know we all do we are all doing what we can and we if we are not perfect it's I guess it's also all right we still survived you know we are so we are in the age, you know, but we are still alive. So it is um, one of the survival strategies to be not perfect, but okay. Okay, bye-bye. Subscribe, play, press likes, write comments. I will answer you uh, when I come back home in a week. So, bye. Bye. <laughs> Hello, I will try to make the video from the train. As, uh, may, I don't know if you know, but in Ukraine uh, we have overnight trains. So now it's 9 p.m. I got on the train and it will be in Ushorod at uh, 9 a.m. So it's 12 hours and uh, I guess it's more than 800 kilometers. I have to check it out. And um, yeah, and it's like one, there are three, three types of the cars also so there's like spaces and this is kind of middle middle price and it is the room with four beds two on the bottom and two up there where people will sleep together and it does not uh, it is for everybody for women for men and kids they are all in one place and um, it's a um, Sometimes for the foreigners it's a super strange experience to sleep with the strangers in a super small space all together. And there are a lot of stories about, I don't know, smells, snoring or new good uh, friends. And sometimes marriages as far as you can imagine.